Hi guys, I'm Will, I'm from Charles International and I'm here to tell you about climbing Kilimanjaro next summer. So I climbed Kilimanjaro in August and it was genuinely one of the best things I've ever done in my life. You're visiting an amazing part of the world, you're helping a wonderful children's rights charity and you're doing something that is a life-changing experience. You'll fly out with a team of people from your university and you'll have raised tens of thousands of pounds for Child Reach International. As part of day two, you visit one of our projects and although you are visiting some of the most impoverished and vulnerable children in the world, my experience of it was that they were just super friendly and it was actually really fun and a really valuable experience and you're also getting to see some of the direct impact of all that time and effort you put into fundraising throughout the year. When you start climbing Kilimanjaro, You start at Mashame Gate, you spend the first day walking through beautiful Tanzanian jungle and most people kind of don't expect this but you actually walk through six different ecosystems and spend most of your days in amazing Tanzanian sunshine. That evening you'll camp at Mashame Hut which is at 2800 metres and it'll be your first try of the food. One of the three things we do to help you deal with changes in altitude is make sure that you're really well fed. The highlight of your next day is you end up camping at Shira Camp, which is genuinely, in my opinion, the most beautiful area of the mountain and is also one of the top 10 sunset spots in the world. It's the kind of like combination of like sparse vegetation and it's very like, it's cool. Anyway, day three is your acclimatization day. It's where you climb high and you sleep low, which is really standard practice for anyone climbing to altitudes and so what we do is we get you to ascend up to Lava Tower which is at 4650 meters and it's this crazy imposing structure of um, lava. dormant lava, yeah that's the one and um, you eat food up there, we try and get you a little bit active so often we do yoga up there and you're basically getting your body to make changes um, at, in the thinner oxygen and then you track all the way back down to Baranko camp um, and then sleeping there you allow your body to recover a bit. The end of day three, as I said, you end up at Baranko camp which is basically internationally recognised for having like these incredible views of the stars. There's very little um, light pollution because you're nowhere near any cities and the air's really thin and so you can just like see the Milky Way. Day four, um, the first thing you do is you ascend Barranco Wall, which is just this quite like steep um, rock structure. It's like 15 minutes of scrambling, which is clambering up boulders, and then 45 minutes of walking. And even if that isn't your cup of tea, at the top of it, you get these amazing views above the top cloud layer, crazy good social media worthy photos, and it's an amazing view. The rest of day four is just good hard walking and you end up at Barafu Camp which is your base camp aka the place that you summit from. Barafu Camp is at 4,800 meters so you're properly up at altitude again. We get you well fed early in the afternoon and we try and get you to bed as early as possible and that's because we plan to wake you up at 11 p.m. So we get you up at 11 p.m. in the morning, uh, uh, we get you fed with porridge, head torch on, wrapped up, music in and it's straight up to the summit. And it's so surreal and beautiful because it's like a trail of torchlight all the way up the mountain in the darkness. You arrive at Stella Point at 6am. Stella Point is the first of the two summits and you're there to see sunrise and it is stunning. It's perfect because at this point you're quite tired and you know at this point one hour to the summit. The path to Huru Peak, glaciers on both sides, like moon landscape ahead of you and it's just one foot in front of another. Take it as slow as you need, and in about an hour you arrive at Uhuru Peak. It's like it is absolutely amazing being at the top of Kilimanjaro, like regardless of who you are. And I think if there's one thing that I say, like of that whole trek, this is the moment that you will not forget, and this is the moment where you just desperately don't want it to end. You're like, I just want to be here forever. This is incredible. Wait, did you climb Kilimanjaro well? <laughs> What comes up must come down. The great thing about mountains is it takes like four days to get to the top and it takes max a day and a half to get back down. You're back down at 3,100 meters by the end of that day. You have a good sleep up in the morning and you get this crazy fun celebration with all the guides and porters who I, they are just the most supportive people in the world. And you have a really wonderful time. And then after that, walk to the bottom, bus back to the hotel and that's your opportunity to celebrate with your group. If I'm honest, at this point I would have been happy to get a flight home, Kilimanjaro was absolutely amazing, but 
because Tanzania has so much to offer, we leave you six days to go do some independent travel. And the two things that people tend to do are safari or Zanzibar. Why would you do safari? Because uh, Tanzania is the home of the Lion King um, and it has the highest population of uh, lions per capita. Just it's the highest concentration. Oh, highest concentration of lions. Okay. And there aren't, there aren't many <laughs> places to go look, see the big five. Your other option is to go to Zanzibar and I mean some pictures are going to appear right now but it is genuinely so beautiful. If you've ever seen Moana it looks like like that. Well Moana's based in the Pacific. I know but it look, it, I genuinely was there like this, this is like being Moana. How do I describe it? It's like white sands, turquoise blue ocean and if you just want to do absolutely nothing because you've done six days of trekking, that's what I did. Um, it is the best place to be. So that is your 15 day, once in a lifetime adventure up Kilimanjaro. A little bit of housekeeping now. So, because you're working with Child Reach International, uh, the vast majority of your costs are actually covered in your fundraising, which means you get this amazing 15 day, once in a lifetime adventure for only £345, or you can pay £195 now and £195 later, and that covers all of your registration. So once you've registered on the trip, you become a fundraiser for Childreach International, which means you'll be raising money for all our projects around the world. Childreach are a child rights charity, and we believe that all children should be free to fulfill their potential. What makes us unique is our build, learn, change model. And what this means is we're building relationships with communities and community leaders. We're learning from those relationships, and that means that they set our parameters for success and then we change things that wouldn't necessarily be obvious from the UK. And this means everything that we do is highly effective, pretty sustainable, and communities really buy into the changes that we're making. We do this by having offices in all of our countries that we work in, and they're run by local people. A really good example of our build, learn, change model is our school farming project, which is tackling the problem in Tanzania that two thirds of the population are malnourished, which has the knock-on effect that children aren't attending school because they're needed at home to work or for health reasons. So we've made this really small change, we've been installing small plots of land for farming in our schools and this tackles the problem in three ways. Children are getting fed a hot meal every day in school, they're getting an education on nutrition and farming and then finally the knock-on effect is that kids are actually attending school in much higher numbers so attendance has gone up from 70 to 98% in our schools. The really great thing about this project is it's self-sustainable. So when a school produces more than it consumes, it sells it off to the community and it can reinvest in making the farms larger or in the school itself. So to cover the cost of your trip and to make sure that at least 50% of what you fundraise goes to our projects, your fundraising target is £3,245 for flights included or £2,445 for ground arrangements only. Included in that is pretty much everything to do with the trip itself. So you get the support of our award-winning fundraising team. Our approach to fundraising is unique. We have regional officers, which means that we can ensure that we get as much one-to-one -one time with you as possible. And we also have a hugely extensive online resource, which means our regional officers can find the idea that suits you best. And we can also take your ideas and make sure we're getting the most out of them. And between our team of six, we have over 15 years of fundraising experience together. So, just to fire off a few ideas, you could do public collections, I've raised a grand in a day, bucket collecting is a bit of an art, but you can get a lot of money out of it. But let's be more fun than that, you could do a pub quiz, you could run a big event, treat it like a club night in a local restaurant, um, you could do a dare or something stupid, we've had a guy stand outside his student union with a fish and a sign that says £5 to slap me with this fish and raised over £500. So I did a uh, kind of dare, I did a sponsored silence, except it wasn't just a day. I said that for every £15 that everyone donated, I would be silent for another hour and raised over £900 and was silent for nearly three days. Some of the things that we actually sought for you is we send you free prize draw tickets, recommended donation £3, the prizes are an HDTV and a £400 GoPro. You could sell 200 of them and that's an easy £600 in the bag. And then the other thing we do is with our online resources, we have template sponsorship letters. You send them off to 60, 70 businesses, you could easily make 500 to a grand if someone's using their CSR budget. We know 3,245 pounds is a lot, but it's also a really impressive figure. So just think how great that's gonna look on your CV. 
Everybody looks at it and thinks, wow, how did they get there? The difference between us and them is we're going to help you fundraise that amount. We understand that there isn't a one-size-fits-all way of getting people to their fundraising target, but we've already sent away over 8,000 students, and that kind of demonstrates that we are quite good at this, and those students have raised their full amount. To be honest, we want to give you an experience of a lifetime, and what we'd love to do is get you from watching this video to the top of Kilimanjaro next summer. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.